The United Kingdom is in a state of mourning. Queen Elizabeth II, the United Kingdom's longest serving monarch, has now passed away at the age of 96. She died in the Scottish estate of Balmoral, one of her favourite homes, where she had spent much of the summer. Her reign lasted for 70 years and it witnessed enormous social changes and political changes around the world. Her son, Prince Charles, is now King Charles III and has said in a statement that the death of his mother and the monarch of Britain is a moment of great sadness. The king and his wife, Camilla Parker Bowles, who is now the Queen Consort, are expected to return to London later in the day today. And King Charles is also expected to address the nation sometime this afternoon. And on Thursday, alarm bells started ringing after the Queen's doctors had placed her under medical supervision. Soon after that, all of Queen's children started to travel to Balmoral, indicating the seriousness of the situation. Her grandson, and now the heir to the throne, Prince William, and also his brother, Prince Harry, gathered there. The Queen Elizabeth II's tenure as the head of the state spanned the transition from the British Empire to the Commonwealth. She witnessed both world wars and the end of the Cold War, and also the United Kingdom's entry into and withdrawal from the European Union. She saw 15 different British Prime Ministers come and go, starting with Winston Churchill and ending with Liz Truss earlier in the week. At Buckingham Palace in London, the crowds gathered to pay their respects. As the word of her death spread, the Union flag at the top of the palace was lowered to half-mast and also an official notice announcing the death was posted outside. Queen Elizabeth II is survived by her four children, King Charles III, Princess Anne, Prince Andrew and Prince Edward. And between them, they have her eight grandchildren and 12 great-grandchildren. The royal family has now entered into a period of mourning. In the coming days, much of national life in Britain will be on hold and also official engagements will be cancelled. And members of the parliament will also pay tribute for the Queen and take an oath to King Charles. A state funeral for the Queen is expected in the next two weeks. And also on this broadcast, we're being joined by senior journalist Ray Locker, who's joining us live from Washington, D.C. at this point of time. Ray, this, this of course is a huge loss for the people in Britain. The Queen was such an important and a towering figure in the United Kingdom. And after having reigned for seven decades, she's now passed away and she's left behind a legacy. And, and it's, it's going to be something that will be talked about because this is an institution that has transitioned from the empire to, to the modern times and still has continued to remain very relevant. Well, absolutely, Mohammed. I mean, she has she is an institution in and of herself. I mean, the royalty is an institution, but she is even more so. I mean, she's the only member of the royal family that has been around in my entire lifetime. I mean, I've seen pictures of her on stamps and coins and currency. And so she has been around for longer than any any British king or queen, and it's hard to imagine what things are going to be like without her image around. Absolutely indeed, and also considering the fact that in the last seven decades that she reigned as the Queen Monarch in Britain, she actually met with every significant political figure from around the world. Tell us more about that. She's met with uh, 12 U.S. presidents. I mean, starting with uh, Dwight Eisenhower, who took office in early 1953, all the way up to Joe Biden. That includes Donald Trump, Barack Obama, George W. Bush, you name it. She's met with all of them, and there are all memorable times uh, 
you know, accounts of her meetings with U.S. presidents. Absolutely indeed. And also, you know, considering the fact that the monarchy is, is now considered a medieval institution, an institution that most other countries around the world have put behind. And, but in Britain, especially under Queen Elizabeth II, the monarchy is still looked upon very fondly. Why do you think that is? Well, I think she did a great job at uh, balancing public opinion. And there were some times in the 60s when uh, pretty close to a majority of the population thought that the royalty was something that they could live without. Certainly in 1997, after the death of Princess Diana, when people wondered why the queen and her family weren't showing enough sympathy or sadness, that was kind of a low point. And she rallied um, you know, from that and basically got stronger. Um, she was just very adept at managing her role in public and in private and working with the political leadership of the times. Absolutely. Indeed. Thank you very much indeed, Ray Lock, for joining us, for joining us from Washington, D.C. and giving us your perspective on this. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.